Hello lovely Lean Girls and welcome to the Lean Girl Fitcast, your place for motivation and mindset mastery on your fitness and your fat loss journey. We are coming in hot today with a topic, one of Gilan and I's favorite. In fact, we talk about this all the time and Gilan actually presents this to corporates all over because having this simple perspective shift and changing the way that you think has the ability to unlock so many new possibilities. When it comes to losing fat and getting lean, we know it all starts where? Upstairs. It starts in the mind. And so today we are unpacking having a fixed versus a growth mindset and how this shift and this change can actually be the key to you finally seeing results this year and enjoying the process, being able to show up more consistently, ha- more consistently and have more perseverance. So I hope you're excited for this one. It is so powerful and a topic we've actually been teasing for a while because we've been preparing for this. We like this is such a good topic and welcome, babe. Are you excited to talk about this one? I am super amped. This what? is one of our favorite topics. This I really believe, you know, and, and I've seen through my work with leaders, high performance individuals, that mindset changes everything. You can have all the knowledge in the world. But if you see things the wrong way, meaning if you interpret your situations incorrectly, uh, if you see yourself uh, uh, in a way that's self-limiting, it's just uh, none of that knowledge, none of that potential that you have ever gets a chance to come to the fore, you know? Yes. And I think just starting off to set up for you going into the difference between having a fixed and a growth mindset is just giving some examples that I know you girls are going to resonate with in terms of having a fixed versus a growth mindset around fat loss. So for a lot of us, we believe that there are many things outside of our control that we believe are holding us back. Things like our genetics. We feel like we are born with a certain genetic kind of genetics and that cannot be changed and that kind of predetermines what kind of results we can get. It also could mean that we think we are born with a certain amount of discipline or willpower and that is also fixed and that's the reason why you can't stay consistent or you can't get results. Um, I mean, what are some other examples that we were discussing in a fat loss context? Yeah, so typically speaking, um, a fixed mindset is the belief that these things are carved in stone, that we're born as a certain type of person or with a certain type of character. And that that can't really change much. Like you are who you are. Um, that we're born being able to understand uh, a certain amount of stuff. You know, our intelligence. That that's fairly fixed. Um, and then, of course, uh, things like whether we're talented at, at doing certain things. We just have the knack for it. Yes, whether uh, I'm athletic or I'm not. Exactly. Or whether I'm good at weight training or perhaps I'm a terrible runner. Yeah, and even creativity as well. And so when we think of creativity, you might think of like the arts. But I've seen you make your recipes and I've seen you look in the fridge and be like, what can I make with what's here? Or how can I swap out these for something else that's lower cal, and so even creativity. Some people might say, "Well, I just don't have the ability to, you know, to be, to be able to put that together." And actually, all of that is bullshit. Right? <laughs> it's that it's that very mindset that doesn't allow you to go there, to be creative, to be athletic, to be disciplined. Exactly. But I think we need to start at the beginning. Yes. To say, what is a mindset? Why are we so excited about it? I love that. Yeah. Yes. What do you? What? How do you? Uh, how would you answer that question? I think that a mindset is a, I guess, a context or a story that you have around, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of stumped. I've never been asked that question. To define it, to right? Define what and we often, we is. hear the term mindset and then people reduce it down to like, oh, thinking positively or negatively, you know, like it's a disposition. Yeah. But actually a mindset, if you think about your mind as a camera and your, your mindset is like the lens. And depending on which lens you put on, it's going to highlight certain features of what it is that you're seeing. Mm. It's going to make some things stand out. It's going to make other things maybe blur out or, or blend in and so on. And so it's exactly the same. Our mindset, which we can define as the way we see things. So the beliefs we have about things, mm. about ourselves and other people in the world, um, the assumptions that we make. Um, this forms the lens through which we interpret ourselves and others in every situation we're in. As well as 
the narratives that we have because we don't walk around consciously thinking to ourselves, what are my beliefs and assumptions about the, the reason why I didn't lose fat, you know? Yes. Uh, I, what like, I like that analogy of the lens because I feel like that's very clear. Yes. And, you know, if you're then changing your mindset, it is like you're putting on either a new pair of glasses or putting on a new lens and suddenly everything looks really different. And by everything looking very different, that we could say is the narrative that we tell ourselves. So, like I mentioned, we're not consciously thinking what are my beliefs and assumptions, but we are, uh, our brain, our mind is creating certain narratives about ourselves we, and it does this as a way to simplify life so that we can move throughout life being able to fundamentally understand things including ourselves and the mm. situations we're in so what we're going to be talking about today is all about well, what are the narratives how did those narratives get in there are they self-limiting are they self-defeating and what are the narratives of a fixed mindset what are the narratives of a growth mindset right which I feel like I resonate with so much in my life. Like going back to when I was younger, I 100% had certain beliefs about how much um, discipline I had. I felt like I wasn't a really disciplined person. I thought I was quite a lazy person. And I kind of started to build this identity of myself. Um, and I guess a lot of those things weren't very helpful or empowering. You know, it sort of made me... Almost before I had even tried, I had already given up because I had already assumed that this was the kind of person that I was. Um, and I mean, some other things like I definitely wasn't athletic. I didn't do any kind of sports at school. Um, I also used to be told that I was big boned. Like I am tall, but I certainly wouldn't say that I'm big boned. Um, and I, I, my family is also like, People used to say, well, genetically, like you do have sort of a pre, you're predisposed to being overweight. Like our family kind of has the fat gene kind of thing. And what that did was, I guess it take, it took away my ability to, or even my motivation to try because I felt like, well, if that's going to be a roadblock anyway, then I may as well not even go there. You know, um, when we talk about a, a fix and a growth mindset, um, we're really looking at what are the beliefs that we have. And, and you're absolutely right. You know, since we're children, we hear things uh, and certain seeds, certain beliefs are planted in our minds without us even realizing it. And then upon introspection, uh, you, you realize like, oh, wow, that was really that was really self-limiting. And so, uh, you know, let me share with you some really fascinating uh, studies that was done by this this groundbreaking study is actually the, the, the study that really was the seed to this entire body of work about fixed and growth mindset by Stanford professor Carol Dweck. Very simply, there were hundreds of children involved in the study. They split them into three groups and they would give all of these children what they called problem sets, which are like problems and puzzles to solve. Each of these groups got a different type of praise. So they were all given certain problems to these puzzles to solve. And then afterwards, the first group was given what they called intelligence praise. So intelligence praise was something like, wow, you're so smart. Jeez, I can see you're really good at these types of problems. Oh, wow, you, you're super talented. And this intelligence praise attributed the child's brilliance to who they were, to their identity. The second group was given what they called effort praise. And the effort praise didn't refer to who the child was, but rather was, a, was directed at the actions that the child took in order to solve or to attempt to solve the problem. Mm. So it was more towards their effort. So it was things like, wow, I loved how hard you tried there. I love that even when you got it wrong, you went back and thought about it and tried again. I love how when you didn't get it right, you tried different approaches instead of giving up. So this was all about... Uh, the effort. The third group just didn't get any praise at all. So it was a, it was a control group. Okay. And then after getting that praise, the different types of praise after the first round of doing puzzles, they gave them access to do even more puzzles. Which group do you think did better in the second round of puzzles? The ones that got the intelligence praise or the effort praise? I mean, I would assume it was the effort praise because... I've learned from experience. It's the people that really succeed are the ones that don't give up and that they're willing to keep on trying. Exactly. And we've spoken about this many times. So <laughs> I set you up for Surprise! success there. <laughs> ah. 
So, you know, we, we counterintuitively, we think that when we say to somebody else, when they do something brilliant, like, wow, you're so brilliant, you're so talented. You know, if we're giving genuine praise uh, and, we, and they know that they've done really well at something, you would think that that encouragement would get people to um, have a sense of self-confidence and to therefore excel through that confidence and self-esteem and to do really well the next time. But in fact, what the study showed was that the exact opposite happens. The children who are given the intelligence or identity praise actually performed worse on the second set of problems than the children who are given the effort praise. Mm. Because now that they had this identity that was kind of handed to them and, and cultivated of, oh, I am smart. Oh, I should be able to solve puzzles like this quickly and with little effort. They opted for puzzles that, were, that they knew that they could solve. Instead of the effort-based praise group, they were rewarded for the actions, for their effort, and therefore it, they chose puzzles that they could put more effort into. The other thing is that the, um, the, the group that got the intelligence praise chose fewer puzzles overall mm. versus the ones with the effort. And the last thing is that just the raw cognitive uh, uh, performance is that the uh, children who got the intelligence or identity-based praise, they actually, if they got, say, in the first round, both groups got 75% of them right, that went down in the second, second group when they got the intelligence phase and, and praise, and the uh, effort group, theirs actually went up. Mm. So it is pretty obvious that when you give somebody an identity or when a person builds an identity of being smart, being talented, you know, being creative, being a certain type of person, weirdly, that actually makes their performance go down. But when the type of feedback and praise that we receive um, puts our focus on effort, persistence, trying different approaches, asking for help or being resourceful when we still can't get things right, that's when the performance actually uh, uh, goes up. And I, I, I know that that applies to self-praise. And right, it's not just about outside people that are praising us or praising our effort. It's more about how we're thinking about ourselves. Exactly. But when we're children, that, um, uh, that fixed or growth mindset gets established from the type of feedback and praise that we get from our parents, from our friends, from our teachers. Mm -hmm. And as adults, we continue to, uh, to have that identity. But now that we know this, there's actual ways that we can start to shift that, especially through the self-feedback as the self-assessment and, and even self-praise that we give ourselves. And I think the good news is here is that it's not like you have a fixed mindset or growth mindset and that is set. This is something that can be shifted. It can be changed. And something that we've spoken about as well, which I found quite interesting, is in some contexts we could have a growth mindset and in others we could have a fixed so perhaps in your career, you think to yourself, yeah, I can, you know, I can get up the ladder, I can learn more, I can become smarter. And then perhaps when it comes to your fat loss or your lean body journey, then suddenly you're stuck. And this is the, the hand of cards you've been dealt and you kind of just stuck with that. Yeah. Um, versus, you know, having a mindset that says, all right, well, these are my genetics. Maybe this is a medical challenge that, that I've got. But what are the things that I can do? What are the things that I could put effort into? What are the things that are inside my control? Because I think often um, what I see in my community and with my girls is that there is some truth in you having some maybe additional challenge that other people don't have to face. But what we do is we use that as a crutch. We use that as an excuse to not take action. Or we use that as a blame element when actually if we do go and look at the effort or if we do go and look at how much persistence, consistency has been there, it'll be a very clear picture. And it's not that it's unfair or that's why you didn't get a result. It's actually based on the effort. Yeah. Which yeah. And so if we, if we split it out, we know that uh, then a fixed mindset is where we've attached our level of performance and our results to who we are, to our identity. And with a growth mindset, we've attached our uh, performance and our abilities and results to the method and effort, which has got nothing to do with who we are, you know, with our, with our identity. So we've detached our identity from it, which you can see that if you um, 
you know, you're on a journey towards success and you experience setbacks uh, along the way or you find out that maybe you were wrong, you tried something and it didn't work or maybe the results weren't what you had thought or your level of performance, you weren't as disciplined or you, whatever the case may be. Um, if we think that that's a reflection of who we are, of something essential about us that we cannot change, then we're going to we're going to want to, A, avoid ever finding out. We're going to want to avoid failures. We want to avoid taking chances. Yeah, I'm wanna... not even going to try. I'm not you even going to try because it's psychologically, it's so uncomfortable to think that if I give it my all and I fail, what's that going to tell me about myself? So we would rather... Tough falls to swallow. Yeah, we would rather um, sabotage ourselves, often unknowingly, so that we can walk away with the story of, oh, but if I'd really tried, or if, you know, we blame external uh, uh, circumstances. So because it's more psychologically comfortable for us to think that, oh, if that didn't happen, or if I did really try, then of course I would be able to do it. Mm. So, so we take things personally and challenges seem quite threatening emotionally. It feels quite threatening to us. But if we take our identity out of it, and we know that every success, every failure, both on both ends of the spectrum, are basically the results of everything that's made it what it is that has nothing to do with us. If we know that it's based on the method, if we know that it, uh, it's based on the effort, we know that it's based on maybe some other circumstances that are totally out of our control. You know, um, for example, when you buy me a packet of uh, sour worms, it's totally out of my control that you surprise me totally with it. Totally out of your but control. But it is within my control whether to eat it or not or to put it away, right? The other night I failed miserably at that and ate the entire, the Don't entire thing. The <laughs> Don't forget the <laughs> And the Magnum ice cream that you bought me at the same time. Um, but it was melting. I had to save it. But um, so here's the thing is that it doesn't feel as personal, doesn't feel as threatening. And in fact, when we deconstruct and say, OK, well, I'm disappointed because I have that setback or I didn't achieve this level of performance that I wanted. And you say to yourself, OK, was there something in the method? Is there something I can change? Was there something in my effort? Was I not persistent? Did I, um, you know, succumb to... Uh, the desire to eat that whole bag of, you know, whatever. And, and so how do I start to change that? Mm. And we realize that we can, we're empowered because we know that there is stuff that we can always look at and change. Yes. And I think taking it back to a fat loss context again. So, um, you know, a, a, another example is to say, all right, I didn't have the best week. You know, I didn't stick to my plan 100%. A fixed mindset would look like, I'm not able to do this because I'm just a person that doesn't have discipline. Um, I am just not the kind of person that likes gym. I actually don't like exercise. That's why I didn't show up. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty much doomed to not make any progress versus having a growth mindset. You would then look at your previous week and you say, you know what, hell's bells. I was not consistent. And what are the things that got in my way? What were the things that I could do better next week? Um, and Almost, the, yeah, there's a, a sense of self-compassion um, and also empowerment to say there are outside things that I can, that I am in control of that can help me in my next week. So having a reflection moment and then being, being able to look at how can I increase those three things. So my effort, my persistence and my consistency. Right. Uh, and the method. Effort, and the method. method and persistence. Effort, method. And yeah, so that might also mean re-looking at your strategy. Have you chosen a strategy that really sucks? AKA anything that's not the Lean Body Lab. Um, no, <laughs> but you know, but the thing is that as well is that, um, you know, you look at calorie counting, for example. I know you teach calorie counting and you have so many uh, women who come to you and say, but I'm eating this number of calories. And you're saying, but are you really why don't you track this way or pay attention to all the little things you have? And so many of them come back to you and say, geez, like I'm actually hundreds of calories over yes. because I, I wasn't paying enough attention. So maybe the plan is right, but maybe your execution, yes. but that's got nothing to do with who you are as a person. And so, you know, uh, 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 this is a fundamental belief that um, we can actually change. And uh, without getting too much into neuroscience, because we'll discuss more neuroscience in the next episode, yeah. but there is a, a term called neuroplasticity, which sounds like a really complex term, but it's our brain's amazing way to actually change and create new neural pathways as we learn and develop new skills. And whether that is um, skills to, uh, related to creativity, any type of talent, intelligence. Um, I don't know if you know this, but the IQ test, was um, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, developed by a Frenchman in the 1920s, not to test how smart you were, but to test which children were, were not uh, doing well with the public schooling system and a different method to engage them. And in fact, one of his, uh, his name is Alfred Binet, in one of his seminal pieces of work, he says we need to protest against such brutal pessimism as modern philosophers who think that things like our intelligence are a fixed quantity, something that cannot be changed. And yet somewhere along the line, we've gone through things in life, like IQ tests in primary school, to, that have caused us to think that we're fixed and that we can't change all that much, or that maybe we'll change a little bit mm. through effort and method. But fundamentally, what we're born with is what we got. And then when we have that idea in our mind, that belief, we start to think as every situation that we find ourselves in as something that's either going to reveal to us and prove that I was born with a high level of intelligence or creativity, character, talent, or it's going to reveal to me that I'm unintelligent mm. or that I'm untalented. And that I can't actually do this, that I'm not actually good enough to achieve this goal. And that feels very threatening. We take that really personally. So we've got to change fundamentally that belief and start to understand that we can change. It's in the neuroscience. Yes. And I think since I've learned about this work on fixed growth versus growth mindset, it's been amazing to see in how many areas of my life I've applied this. And in things that I thought, wow, like, okay, maybe... Um, I could change this, but I couldn't change that. How this has opened so many more doors for me to be like, wow, actually, maybe if I actually tried, I could. And that's been true in so many areas, including obviously my fitness journey and fat loss journey. And I think it's quite clear when you see people online that have these amazing lifestyle transformations. Clearly, they had a certain mindset that wasn't serving them and they were able to move into one that was empowering and has enabled them to get amazing results. So guys, this is going to be a two-part episode because there's so much good stuff on fixed and growth mindset. And as with all of the Lean Goal Fit casts, we want to make sure this is really practical. And I'm sure you're dying to know how you are going to start moving from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset along this journey. And so Gilan has some amazing, um, really easy, simple, practical ways to help us do that, that we are going to be sharing in our next episode. So this is a two part episode number 21 and 22 are going to be married together. And in episode 22, we are even going to give you a cool little template that is going to help you to implement this. So if you've been sitting there listening to this episode thinking, damn, Ange, I think I might have a fixed mindset around fat loss, then you are going to love, love, love this next episode. Yeah. And you know, one way to, to realize that a fixed mindset is being triggered because we have these different triggers in different contexts is that if you feel disappointed by a certain result that you got, or maybe at the end of the week and you weren't disciplined, you're disappointed in yourself. Anytime you feel that kind of emotion, um, that emotion that, you know, when you're so sure of something, you realize you're wrong or you so wanted a certain result and it didn't happen if you feel that emotion and you feel like you're taking it personally mm -hmm. like you think this is some kind of reflection a poor reflection on you chances are that's the fixed mindset coming in and that's really what we want to work to uh, detach ourselves from and it will totally totally change your life wonderful girls so i hope that you enjoyed this first little unpacking of this new concept around a fixed versus growth mindset please do us a favor and share this episode because this concept is helpful not only for anyone on a fat loss journey, but for everyone in life that wants to grow and thrive. So please share it. It also helps our podcast to get to more people who need it. So please share it on Instagram, share the link with someone today. Um, that will be fantastic. And then we are really looking forward to the next episode where we are going to get into the pretty practical side of moving that pretty mind from fixed to growth.